Welcome back to the Director's Garage. I am your host and resident idiot, Michael. And today we have a What's in the Box Studio Edition. Yes, yeah, stay tuned for that. I think you know where we're heading first. Like, where else am I going to go? First up, you'll notice a few things missing from the background back there. Most notably, the U18 Sar. I just love saying that name. Um, <laughs> that headphone got sold last week, and it's gone off to a new home, and I hope somebody really gets to enjoy it. I sure did. It was the source of a lot of shootouts for me, and it gave me some great things to compare to. Great headphone. Happy it's going somewhere where somebody can enjoy it full time. Goodbye. Now, with that headphone gone, I've decided to hang on to the Unique Melody Mest for a little while because I've got a few things coming in that would make it for a great shootout against that. So the Mests are staying here for the time being. Now, next up, I have an announcement, a new partner agreement with Linsoul. Because of you guys, I've been able to get some product on the way here in the near future, and we'll be doing some shootouts and reviews of their terrific offerings. If you're unaware, Linsoul is the, the home of Thigh Audio, Thi Audio. I'm going to find out what that is for sure. <laughs> um, the Canera, the AAW, some super high quality IEMs from China. They are driving the quality versus price equation that one a little lower and it's good for us consumers because we're benefiting we're getting high quality stuff at lower and lower prices that's good for everyone now I have to thank Lillian Dang at Linsoul she's a co-founder and the partnership came together very quickly because of her and I'll have more about how these episodes will work uh, coming up soon now, I have a quick update on the story I brought you last time about mastering, Mastermania. There's another artist who is trying to sell her masters, and at least rumored to be trying to find a buyer for her masters, and that's Dolly Parton. Now, Dolly Parton, as, as popular as she is as a performer, she's even bigger in the music world as a writer. She wrote stuff like That's What Friends Are For, and I Will Always Love You, which Whitney Houston went on to record. She's got her string of pop hits. Look up her catalog sometime. It's freaking amazing. So she's trying to sell. They're estimating that if she can sell her masters, it's going to bring in $300 million. That's astounding. And yet, if there's anybody I would love to see sell her masters, it's Dolly, because I know she'll do something really good with the money. And I have one bit of music news for you, and that's unless you've been living under a rock, McCartney 3 drops this Friday. I haven't heard a thing off this record yet, and I'm super excited to hear it. I've been buried in a lot of other projects, recording that audiobook, a lot of things. Um, but it's Paul's third album that he's recorded all of the instruments himself. Uh, now his voice, Paul's voice, isn't quite what it used to be, but I don't really care. This guy's a legend. I hope he's releasing material for the next 20 years. He's a huge part of my youth. I'm a giant Beatles fan. I was born the year Sgt. Pepper was released. It's in my DNA to love the Beatles and follow anything that Paul's doing. I'm always going to be interested. And those are your headlines for today. Now, let's get into it. Now, I have here before me, this is the... Blackmagic Design Editor Keyboard. It's live, I'm using it to switch, see? One on, one off, one on, one off. So, um, <laughs> sorry, I like doing that. Isn't this fun? It's probably driving you crazy at home, but I could do this all afternoon long. Okay, enough. Um, this is the Blackmagic Design Editor Keyboard. Um, it's great because it's got this shuttle wheel here that will directly talk to DaVinci Resolve. You can move around your timeline. It's got trimming functions over here in this section. And then up here, it's got your edit functions to write and overwrite and move things around. And then on the top row, it's got some specialty things like freeze frames, adding transitions, uh, ripple deleting, regular deleting, and things like that. And then it's got a, a keypad. That's the great thing. The negatives on this keyboard are that the keyboard is loud super loud. You can hear when I'm switching. These are loud keys. They announce their presence with authorita. Beyond that, the other negatives are that this keyboard will not work in Logic. It won't work anywhere else. It won't work in Media Composer. And then 
from a functional standpoint, this drives me crazy. See down here, here's your shift and return keys. The shift key is cut in half to incorporate the four arrows. These arrows need to be over here or up here or somewhere other than buried in the middle of the keyboard because when you go to type, I'm always missing the shift key and arrowing to the beginning of the line. So what does that have to do with today? Well, we're looking at this box to sort of maybe take some of the strain off of me being stuck with this giant thing on my desktop. So with that, I think I'm just gonna rip into it and let's see what happens. Oh man, this is cathartic. I, this is like, argh, Yes, it's the Blackmagic Design Speed Editor. Blackmagic Design Speed Editor. And what this is, it's like taking this section of the keyboard, of the editor keyboard, and this section and squishing them together. I'm hoping that maybe I can not need to chew up all of this desk space at one time. Before I show you what's inside this speed editor box, I should say I'm, I'm a little bit of a whore for these Blackmagic panels because I also have this one. This is the DaVinci Resolve Micro Panel. Ooh, ooh. And, and what this is, is it's a color correction board and it allows you to do color correcting using more professional advanced controls. And I don't use it all that much, to be honest with you. This is ridiculous overkill for what I do on this show. Show, I have one basic grade that I apply to every show once and it's done and I so I don't I'm not jumping around and constantly tweaking stuff in the show there's no time for it I mean I barely have time to get the graphics on these things half the time so let's take a look at it let's get it open let's pull this out some benefits to this obviously it's smaller it's wireless runs off of an internally charging battery, so you don't even need to worry about getting a cable to it, whereas this Mambo here needs a, uh, a wire going into it all the time. So let's unbox this, why not? Hooray! The one thing I'll say about Black Magic is they make phenomenal, phenomenal products. This. Their stuff is built like a tank. This is gonna be a brutal reveal because Blackmagic is gonna cover this with all kinds of foam because that's with how they package all their products. But here's the first reveal, ready? There it is, okay. That's pretty anticlimactic. I knew they were gonna, they always cover their stuff in foam. So let's do the real reveal right now. Boom. And here it is, here it is. This is the small version. You can see this is a much smaller version of what this desktop thing is. There is a USB, uh, three USB 3 to USB 3 cable. I've got some stuff itis going on here. There's too much crap. I heard that if you buy this by the end of the year, you'll get a DaVinci Resolve Studio dongle with it. I don't see that in the package. I'm gonna have to write them and ask. This compared to this for cutting, is uh, it's a much better situation, right? Uh, I mean, I think that's clear. Where this is metal, this guy's plastic. This is all plastic here. It is still a heavy weight though. Um, it is not as big as this. Same jog wheel though. They feel identical. It looks like it's part of the, kind of looks like it's part of the same mold, right? So this is just a, a keyboard editor that will help you get through your cuts. So that's my unboxing. It's just this thing. I can't really show it to you in action. I'm not set up to do that. I just was unboxing it to show you what it looks like. So the question is really, will this smaller pint-sized version of a keyboard editor help me more or hurt me more than having the full big banana here? I don't know the answer to that. And the only way I'm gonna know is to play with it for a few weeks and cut it, try and cut a couple episodes on it and see how it do. I do have one other product coming in that's a much bigger deal than this. These have been kind of all over YouTube if you look for it. You'll see how these work. They're, they're all over the place. But it turns out I need this keyboard because it's got a space bar and if I plug this in here and hit the space bar, Yeah, that no worky. It would be cool if they could make this into a hardware switcher where these, you know, this would be your cut button 
These would be your camera buttons. That's something I would love Blackmagic to look into. I'm going to put it in their forum because, man, if I could switch the episodes using this tiny guy, this thing's it's wireless. It'd be great. So what do these things do? I mean, do you need these to work? No, you can work with the mouse and keyboard. I'm just looking for ways to make my run through getting things cut together go a little bit faster and a little bit smoother. And anything that can help me save time is something that gives me a few more minutes to spend on graphics and some of the stuff that's a little harder for me to do, which I don't do in Resolve. I do that all in After Effects. I know After Effects from, I've been using After Effects since 1995 and I still don't know it that well, but I know enough to get around it and do things like this. So this is just a quick episode to uh, show off a new toy, the gadget that came in the studio. And coming up, I have a few things on order, including another studio, bigger studio edition. I've yet to decide what the next what's in the box is going to be, though. We've got the partnership with Linsoul and Empire Ears, and that's coming up. Before you go, I'd ask you to like and subscribe because that helps this show grow, and we can get more of these manufacturers and distributors in-house, which is a good thing. It expands what we can do and the, the headphones that I can show you. And I, and I will say one other thing, and that's that I don't get to keep this stuff. This is stuff I, they're going to send me to review and send back, so it's not like I'm profiting off of it. Oh, really? Just making that clear because nothing about this show to date has been about profit. Maybe we should do that before the end of the year. I should do a, a summary episode where we wrap up how much money I spent on stupid shit this year because that number might be cathartic. Mm -hmm.